Good morning, everyone. Yay! 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 This is the day the Lord has rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful day for a ribbon cutting, isn't it? Let us pray. God, we thank you for you alone are worthy to be praised. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for this fellowship. We thank you for all that we see, have seen, and will see you do. We ask that you would just hover now in this place as you are already here. We met you when we came in. Would you bless us today? Would you keep us today? May this be a day of continued transformation. We thank you, God. It is in your name that I pray. I pray in your name, of whom some here call you Yahweh. I pray in your name, of which some here call you Allah. I pray in your name. We call you Jesus. Amen. 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 Good morning. God is good. God is good. Amen. 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 My name is Jacqueline Alexander. I'm with the Community Builders. Uh, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here today. This has been a long time coming for all of us. Uh, this is uh, 14 years, 15 years now, Pastor. Uh, I have been working on this with TCB for the past five years. Uh, Rob Fossey has been working on this for six years. So this has truly been a labor of love. And to just say how grateful we are to be in partnership with Emory uh, Fellowship and Emory Beacon of Light, it's an honor. And, uh, uh, you know, most of you probably don't hear it from nonprofits most time, but, you know, this is a sacred project. Yeah. This, is, this is a blessed project. Yeah. Uh, the last time that we were here for a construction meeting, they were actually uh, testing the baptismal pool. Uh, and myself and, and my colleague, Stephanie Pearson, were trying to get past her to do an altar call. Uh, <laughs> and so that's what fellowship is about. It, it, it goes across lines of whether we're a nonprofit, we're a uh, affordable housing developer, a community developer, we are a partner. Yeah. And we take pride in, in having come here and, and, and to be with you guys and just thank you. Thank you. Um, it took an army of believers, believers in creating a transformational project that acknowledges and honors the history of this community and supports the evolution in the new living history of this community. It was the believers who had faith, perseverance, creativity, and willingness to drive to the solutions that allowed us to celebrate the completion of the Beacon Center. Creating a mixed-use complex with over 175,000 square feet of space, with 99 affordable units, office space, community space, a future culinary arts kitchen, and the historic renovation and expansion of this church, with three separate owners, three separate financing structures, new market tax credits, low-income housing tax credits, tax exempt bond financing. This is only a project for believers. Yeah. Let's just be clear. This is a project for believers. You could not step foot on this land unless you believed in the vision and the good that we are doing here today. It is the creation of opportunities for people to work, live, and worship in this complex that makes the Beacon Center the epicenter of Georgia Avenue. It is our belief at the community builders to build and sustain strong communities where people of all incomes can achieve their full potential. Connecting with and establishing a bond with our great partners, the Emory Fellowship, Emory Beacon of Light, who share in our belief and vision has been a true honor. Collectively, we are the stewards of the Beacon Center, and today we celebrate bringing the Beacon Center to you. Thank you. I'm at the 
I didn't even know what that was for. <laughs> no, we're going to do it now. Okay, all right, all right. Jackie and I felt that there were some people that we just had to call their names out today without whom this project would not have happened. And so uh, we added it in spite of Miss Tiffany's schedule. That's right. <laughs> so we just asked you to bear with us because it's important that we honor the people that were here day to day. And so we want to thank the believers of the project. So to the TCB team, Jeff Heisler, Satya Morthy, Stephanie Pearson, Doreen Dew, Aretha Estep, Sheila Kearney, Steve Lodi, Charles Penny, Michael Gray, Jim Rushford, Tom Bonapani, and Malik Aziz, thank you for your creativity and making this happen. And, okay, so we're going to ask you not to applaud after right. each one. <laughs> Okay, so we want to thank the entire Emory Fellowship. We have we had one name we had to add to that, and that was Troy Watson. Um, the, the Emory Beacon of Light, our executive director, Elisa Molino and Janice Hadrigal for all the last minute things they had to do. Redstone, uh, Brian Kilbane, John Dwyer and crew, they're not here today. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Jack Bernhardt and the full team of Michael Green and the construction administrators. Wells Fargo, Scott Penover and Yolanda Law. Um, the trustee of uh, U.S. Bank, Dorsal Robinson. Klein Hornig, Aaron O'Toole, and Eric Herman, JDC, Sean Samuel, and Mike Kajer, Tordy Gallus. Uh, we're kind of honored today to have both partners here, Tom Gallus and John Tordy, Sharif Elfar, Felix Deloach, Mauricio Malia, Zach Kilsman, and I heard that Anthony Catania was with us. Uh, for Ellis Dale, Mr. Kevin Ash is with us today, Jennifer Battle, Glenn Barrett, and Joy Moore. That's right. And Drake Morgan as well. Got to yes, for Drake. Make sure we say Drake. In our EUV, Ms. Gina Merritt, Gail Northern, and David Davenport. We'd like to thank the D.C. Housing Finance Agency crew, uh, Sue Ganza, uh, Kelly Brown, Siyum uh, Gazar, Christopher Donaldson, and Jeff Cooper. For DACD, Washi Wali, Paul Walker, Rej Mahala, and Allison Ladd. For DCHA, Alistair Smith and Dartisha Myers. And for DHS, Dallas Williams and Angela Hardeman. Thank you, everybody. Thank Without you. you, we would not be able to do any of the work that we've done, so we appreciate all your efforts. Okay, good morning again. The Emory Beacon of Light began uh, serving the Brightwood community in 1997. Our first program was housing the homeless. We work with Emory Church in housing homeless families once a month in conjunction with the Capitol Hill Group Ministries. And when we renovated the parsonage with our Jewish faith-to-faith -faith partners through Yahad, it became the lighthouse. We then had transitional housing for homeless families in a renovated English basement. And over the years, we have served more than 250 families through our transitional housing program. <laughs> Working with homeless families has been the cornerstone of all that we do. And additionally, every time a family was ready to move to a permanent residence, we had difficulty finding affordable housing, which was one of the impetuses for this project to start. The Beacon Center has been 10 years in the making and only three people from the current development team have been involved in all of those years. That's Pastor, me, and our developer, Ms. Gina Merritt. <laughs> um, the project began through the visionary leadership of Pastor Daniels. <laughs> he saw the vision, preached the vision, and finally led the rest of us to implementation. We have been through many iterations of what finally has become the Beacon Center. It was through joining with our current partner, the Community Builders, in 2013 that the project really became a reality. So Jackie uh, talked about our partnership. It has been the thing that has made this happen. We've been through three administrations in the city. 
Mayor Williams uh, in introduced the um, Neighborhood Investment Fund, and along with all of our partners in the Washington Interfaith Network, we feel like we made that happen. Under Mayor Fenty, we were awarded NIF funds for the first pre-development dollars for the Beacon Center. And then the actual approval came from the Housing Production Trust Fund when Vincent Gray was the mayor of the city. With the help of our councilwoman all along the way, Mayor Bowers Bowser, who is now our mayor. Yeah. <laughs> Before we could put shovels in the ground, however, the D.C. Preservation League had the church declare, declared a historic landmark, which added two more years, more design, Sharif, and $4 million to the project. There were many hearings throughout this process and many wind blue t-shirts at every hearing. The, <laughs> the, the remaining construction of this project has happened under the Bowser administration. She has been in support of this project through all of her council years, and I'm happy to see that she will be here when it is finally completed. Uh, when we needed additional funds for the church component, we were awarded New Markets tax credits from the other arm of TCB, but they required leverage dollars, and that's when the United Methodist Development Fund stepped into the breach for us. They've been a major player in allowing us to leverage their funds in order to have the New Markets tax credits. With the help of uh, Klein Hornig and many other lawyers, Aaron, uh, and seems like all the lawyers and accountants in the world have to do new markets tax credit deals, we finally made it happen. We also, at this point, should thank our own accountants, Burt Smith and Company, who helped us to navigate what it means to be a Kuliki B. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully in the next 12 months, you'll be invited back for the opening of our culinary arts training program with Art Adrenaline and Reese's Services, which will give us a sit-down restaurant that not only trains chefs, but through changing perceptions will tra train wait staff as well. We'll be giving the community the one thing that they requested when we had our community meetings, and that was a sit-down restaurant. And in, <laughs> in doing so, we'll not only be providing skills and training for employment to returning citizens and others. <laughs> we are so grateful and humble to be able to add affordable housing as well as permanent supportive housing as services to our community along with the other programs that EBO provides, which includes our food pantry, our immigration clinic, a clean team, and technical assistance to small businesses in the community. There is still work to be done, and we're going to do it, and then hopefully I can retire. <laughs> I don't think so, Hazel. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am Rob Fossey from the Community Builders, and I am absolutely delighted to be here today. Uh, our headquarters for the Mid-Atlantic operations are right here in the District of Columbia, which is uh, a second hometown for the Community Builders. Our journey did start in South Boston. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, colleagues uh, from all over the country here joining us today, all of whom have had a hand in making this happen. Jackie uh, referred to, to that uh, already. None, however, have been more critical to the fulfillment of our commitment to this partnership and its extraordinary vision than Jacqueline Alexander. In preparing these remarks, I Googled servant leadership and was mildly surprised when Jackie's image didn't pop up. As the <laughs> She's a leader in our region and at our company and has selflessly managed DCB's day-to-day -day responsibilities to this extraordinary team and with the professionalism and positivity that has set an impossibly high new bar. Vince Lombardi said, I, I, no one expected that transition. <laughs> Uh, the dictionary is the only place that success comes before work. And for people in their 20s, a dictionary is a, it's a book <laughs> that has words in alphabetical order. <laughs> uh, 
what, I, <laughs> what I'm about to say will, will likely ring true for our brothers and sisters working in health care, education, prison reform, immigration, voting rights, social justice, and as well to so many of our partners uh, here today and not able to be here today because they're working in, in, in the public sector uh, that have helped make this possible. Uh, as a mission-directed nonprofit developer, we face the task of hours, days, weeks, months of effort that go into one celebration like today. We push through that and we're right back at it every other day because the stakes are so high. Successes like this change lives, and you simply cannot put a price on that. Across the country, the demand for decent, safe, and affordable housing has never been more pronounced, while the resources to produce and preserve continues to shrink. If this were offset by commensurate increases in worker wages so people could afford uh, more rent, that'd be great. Anyone think that's happening? We are indeed fortunate to have a mayor and council who are wise to this and continue pushing the envelope on resourcing and collaboration to compensate, which is one reason we're able to stand here today. The chief reason that we're standing here today uh, is Pastor Daniels. Hey, Hazel said we've been working on this for 10 years, or they've been working on this for 10 years, we, we for five, but I think Pastor Daniels has been pursuing this vision since before Zion Williamson was born. <laughs> he is first and foremost a man of faith, but also considerable determination. And there is no such thing as an insurmountable, insurmountable obstacle between pastor and fulfilling a righteous mission. Yeah. Hazel and Jackie also touched on the number of people that, that go into making something like this possible. And nothing is more emblematic of the hope and promise of better days to come than what surrounds us today. We're proud to be a partner in this magnificent venture and grateful to all who helped make that possible. To paraphrase Dr. King, the arc of the moral universe is long, but with commitment and resolve from all of us, it bends toward justice. Thank you. Well, good morning, Brightwood. Uh, my name is Brandon Todd, and I represent Ward 4 on the Council of the District of Columbia. And this is a wonderful day in Ward 4 and a wonderful day for Upper Georgia Avenue and a wonderful day for the Brightwood community. So let's hear a round of applause for a wonderful day in Ward 4. Good morning uh, to our mayor, Mayor Mario Bowser, Hazel Broadnecks, president of the Emory Beacon of Light and the entire Emory Beacon of Light team, uh, members of the mayor's administration, Todd Lee, Polly Donaldson, and Tyrone Garrett, uh, our advisory neighborhood commissioner, Candace Tiana Nelson, who represents this single member district. I saw the president of the Brightwood Citizens Association here this morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joseph W. Daniels, Jr., and the entire faith community. Uh, and every one of our development and construction partners, because without them, we wouldn't be here today. And I would also like to thank my chief of staff, Cheryl Newman, whose singular job on this project was to make sure that Hazel and Pastor were happy at all times and that we were doing our absolute best to move the ball forward. Uh, so it is my pleasure to welcome everyone to Brightwood, one of War Four's beautiful neighborhoods, uh, which, as we can see, continues to grow and attract new investors 
investment and activity. And today we celebrate just the latest example of Brightwoods and Upper Georgia Avenue's revitalization, the long-awaited Beacon Center. I've been pleased to support this project since my days uh, as a council staffer for then Ward 4 council member and in my role now as the Ward 4 council member. Uh, Mayor Bowser, you have been resolute in your support uh, to this project and you've made sure that everyone in our city's government uh, were just as resolute and focused. So thank you, Mayor, and thank you to your entire team for your focus and commitment uh, to make sure this project happened. Let's give the mayor a big round of applause. We have all eagerly awaited this opportunity to welcome the new Beacon Center, neighbors, and the vibrancy that this will bring to Upper Georgia Avenue. All of us, the District of Columbia, the community, faith, and faith leaders alike, have, all, have long recognized the need for more affordable housing, more permanent supportive housing, and more commercial space, community space, and amenities for this section of our fabulous ward. We all knew that transforming this historic structure into a vision for the future would not be easy, and we all knew that it would take hard work, grit, determination, and a dream for what this center could mean for its residents and for this community here in Brightwood. And this building grew. So did our hopes and aspirations for the future of the District of Columbia, because today we don't just celebrate the building of a structure, we celebrate the building of community. A strong, resilient, and supportive community is a goal that requires all of us to work together, and we see the fruits of its labor here before us today. The old saying, patience is a virtue, could not be more true in this case. We waited patiently as this project moved forward, and now the Beacon Center will be a real virtue to this community. With 99 units of affordable and permanent supportive housing, units over 30,000 square feet of retail, commercial space, and almost 10,000 square feet of community and recreation space. This development will literally change the face of Upper Georgia Avenue. The Beacon Center represents the very best of what we can achieve when the government, the private, nonprofit partners, community associations, and the faith community all work together hand in hand. And I'm especially grateful for the historic Emory United Methodist Church led by Dr. Joe Daniels, their moral leadership and their steadfast determination to practice what they preach has brought us to this remarkable day today. The Beacon Center represents yet another chapter in history of this church and this community, and I'm just thrilled that we are all able to celebrate this milestone together. Congratulations to everyone involved. I know that there will be more to come as this center will stand as a beacon for our ward and shine a light on the revitalization of Upper Georgia Avenue. And I know that you all stand with me when I say I'm Ward 4 proud this morning. Thank you and God bless you. Good morning. I am Tyrone Garrett, the Executive Director of the District of Columbia Housing Authority. Um, and I, I just want to say I'm probably going to yield some of my time to Pastor Daniels because he wants to get back in the game. If you notice, he's moving, he's rocking back and forth. He, he wants to get back up here and talk to you. <laughs> but he should. He should. Um, uh, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners for the DCHA, I, I want to say congratulations. And I also want to say thank you. I want to say thank you because you've allowed us to participate. Um, this is what it's about. This is about a community coming together. This is about district agencies coming together to build a public and private partnership. You always hear uh, Mayor Bowser talk about that, about agencies, nonprofit organizations, private sector individuals coming together along with the community to build something like this. And the one thing that I'm so proud of about DCHA participating is because it's not just about the building. It's not the brick and mortars. It is about the human capital. This particular structure is going to service individuals from the community who need support. And from that support, they will support us. 
they will build something in this particular community um, that no one will ever be able to take away from them, along with their self self-respect and their abilities to move forward with their lives. So give yourselves a hand, because it's important to understand that. And again, the DCHA has contributed funding, but that funding is just a small portion for what, to what everyone else has done. Um, we're just a piece of the puzzle, um, and without pieces to the puzzle, you never create a masterpiece. So please, again, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, myself as the Executive Director of the DCHA, I thank you for letting us participate. Good morning. Uh, my name is Todd Lee. I am the Executive Director of the District of Columbia Housing Finance Agency. Uh, and I just want to start by saying that this is a beautiful, beautiful day for a celebration. I want to start by thanking Pastor Daniels and the Emory body because I know you prayed up this son uh, this morning. Um, you know, Councilmember Todd, uh, you know, hit, hit it out the park in, in terms of, you know, Ward 4 proud. Um, I'm a Ward 4 resident, and I got the opportunity, um, myself and my family, to watch, uh, you know, this grand, you know, blessing come out of the ground, be topped off, and finally completed. Uh, residents moved in, and, and it is just, it was an awesome, awesome thing to uh, behold over time. Um, talking about the body, um, and the Emory body in particular, it, it really does remind me of what it takes uh, in order to get something like this accomplished. Um, just like it takes every single member working uh, to advance this ministry, it takes a bunch of folks coordinating, rowing in the same uh, direction in order to bring something like this to pass. You know, just thinking through from, you know, inception, it, it, it takes a leader, you know, a visionary, someone to actually come up with a plan and to get that ball rolling. Thank you once again, you know, Pastor Daniels. It takes financing. It takes planning. Uh, it takes the architects, the engineers, the general contractors, uh, the community, uh, et cetera, to, to really pull pull something uh, this size and, and something that's going to have this type of impact off. Uh, and then, then I drill down. It, it takes a part of a body in order to get it done. And, and by that, I'm talking about the financing, you know, which I know the most about with respect to this project. Um, you know, it, it takes Wall Street who purchased our bonds, institutional investors who bought, you know, all of the tax credits, you know, nonprofit investors, as well as our government, uh, which really provided the linchpin um, to, to getting this done. You know, as a, as a long-term financier, I know how complicated, you know, some of these deals can be. Uh, most of them that have this type of impact, you know, have a gap, and our government is committed in providing the funding necessary to fill those gaps. And so I actually want to thank Mayor Bowser at this juncture for her commitment to continue to provide the, to provide the funding necessary uh, for us to have a housing production trust fund to bring deals like the Beacon Center, um, you know, to, 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 to fruition. Um, and then I want to go on and, and drill down a little bit further. Um, you know, our, our staff is like the hand, you know, of this body. Um, it, 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 there's many pieces. There's a thumb. There's a palm. There are fingers. Um, it takes uh, a bunch of folks and functions inside of our organization in order to bring the bond and credit financing uh, that it takes to finance deals like this. And so I want to thank um, the vast majority of the DCHFA team is back there in the corner. I want to thank you for your commitment to work that you do every day and what you did here at Beacon Center uh, in particular. Uh, thank you very much, and um, looking forward to cutting the ribbon. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Polly Donaldson. I'm director of the Department of Housing and Community Development. Delighted to serve in Mayor Bowser's cabinet and to be part of the housing team that uh, is helping to make affordable ha housing happen across the district. But I actually come here first as a, a woman of faith who got involved in housing 30 years ago through my church. 
uh, and who I know we had conversations, Reverend Daniels, when I was working with a nonprofit that was faith-based on the Fort View Project, the Fort Apartments right across the park here, and I used we used to see each other. We were neighbors, and we were trying to figure out how we were going to all be able to get our projects done and all of that. And I'm just, this is such a great day to be able to celebrate with you, Reverend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, um, I, like I said, I, so I feel like I'm one of you that's been sitting there saying, oh my gosh, how long is this, and, and what is it going to take to get, and what's going to be the next hurdle, and what's it going to take? And all I can say is, you don't know how great it is to be able to to work at an agency that is actually helping you make that happen. And that's what DHCD is doing. And I will say that the without the investments the mayor of Bowser has made, she doubled down from day one in office to double the Housing Production Trust Fund to $100 million each year. I, I can tell you that this is unprecedented nationally. We, we invest more in our housing trust fund than any other municipality per capita across the United States. We are leading, our mayor is leading. She is actually now leading nationally as head of the National League of Cities Housing Task Force preparing recommendations for a national and federal policy agenda for how we must work to solve the affordable housing crisis across the United States. But it starts, it starts right here in Washington, D.C. With the investments that we have made, we put 17, over $17 million into this. That money, the finance people will tell you, Todd Lee just told you that without that, without that government gap financing, projects like these don't reach the end zone, don't reach the finish line. And that is why I'm just delighted to be able to be here today to not just say we did it, but to know we can do more and we will be doing more. And yes, no, that's exactly right. We must do more. Because for all of the wonderful residents that will be living here, the seniors, the homeless, those who um, have want to be in this community, want to live and thrive in the Georgia Avenue Quarter, in Brightwood, we know we need to do more all across the city and that every ward must participate and must work like you did from community, from using your own assets, your own resources, leveraging them, figuring out how can we better serve our community. Um, that's how I come to ab approach all the work we do in housing, and I look forward to continuing to work with you all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Wayne Moy. Good morning. Uh, my name is Wayne Moy. I'm with the United Methodist Development Fund, UMDF, and uh, I'm so honored and privileged um, to be here with you to celebrate with you all um, this uh, opening of uh, Beacon uh, of the Light. Beacon. <clears throat> the UMDF is actually celebrating its 50th anniversary as well, and we've done thousands and thousands of loans, and I think of all the loans that we've done, this is probably the most complicated and took the longest. <laughs> 2005 at least. <laughs> um, but the time has come. God's time. God's time has come. And today we'll cut the ribbon and open this facility up and start transforming lives. Everyone needs safe, decent, stable housing. You supply some of that here at Beacon, Emory Beacon of Light now. Some of our own will need supportive housing community space, and you've also supplied that here as well now. Emory Beacon of Light has been aptly named, um, and it's very apparent, Emory, em Emory Beacon of Hope um, will provide hope for generations to come. Um, I've, you know, there's tons of people to thank, um, but I've personally had the personal privilege to work with uh, Reverend Daniels and Hazel. Reverend Daniels, I heard his vision. He sold his heart and vision to myself and to our board. Um, and Hazel worked tirelessly. Um, Thanksgiving, I don't know how she managed, th you know, doing Thanksgiving and uh, emailing us <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> and Mother's Day. So... Um, Mother's Day. <laughs> so, um, thank you all, and again, we're uh, very happy and proud and, and privileged to be part of this uh, uh, amazing uh, endeavor. Thank you.
Amen. Amen. This truly is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad about it. My name is Bishop Latrell Miller Easterling, and I'm the servant leader of the Baltimore Washington Conference. This is a day birthed in the heart of a servant leader who understood that when Christ views the landscape of the beloved community, his analytical analysis will be based on whatever you've done to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done unto me. This is a day nurtured in patience, persistence, and prayer, understanding that we are the hands and feet of Christ in a world too consumed with wealth, power, and privilege, and too often bereft of concern for those looking for a hand up, not a hand out. This is a day envisioned by the rhetorician we love to quote but rarely seek to embody as he gave his Nobel Peace Prize speech. Dr. Martin Luther King stated, God never intended for one group of people to live in superfluous, inordinate wealth while others live in abject, deadening poverty. He also said... There is nothing new about poverty. What is new, however, is that we have the resources to get rid of it. This is a day that bears the fruit of partners who came together hand in hand and heart and heart to help America make good on the check she wrote at the founding of this nation, a check that Dr. King articulated had too often come back marked insufficient funds. Well, today, here on Georgia Avenue, this beacon of light shines brightly, and the dream of this fellowship has not come back insufficient, but has become a reality. This is the day. That proves Emory Fellowship, United Methodist Church, would not fall prey to the nimby cry of so many other communities. Communities who claim they care in public, but in private whisper, not in my backyard. This is a day that stands as a primer on discipleship, leadership, and partnership. This triad of faith transformed the aspirational into the practical and creates a new kind of church which offers blessings for all. This is a day when a servant leader in the form of Mayor Bowser is not using her platform to rape and pillage and take away from the community, but to pour into and lift up a community. She's not using it as a stepping stone for what is to come, but she said, while God has me planted here, I will bear fruit, fruit that will last. This is a day that the support of four bishops, Bishop May, Bishop Scholl, Bishop Marcus Matthews, who is here, would you please stand? Evidences what passing the mantle but not letting go of the vision looks like. I am indebted to my predecessors for believing in and supporting this work. This is the day when the people called Methodists exemplify the gospel witness in John 1.14, which proclaims, according to Eugene Peterson, the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood to walk with, work with, advocate with, heal with, loose with, and lift as we climb. I am exceedingly proud of the work of the Reverend Dr. Joseph Daniels. The disciples of Emory Fellowship and all those who brought this day to reality. This beacon center is a beacon of light, a beacon of love, a beacon of hope, a beacon of healing, and a beacon of promise to all those who will enter in. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
Good afternoon. I should say good morning still, everybody. My name is Joe Daniels, and I have the privilege of serving the best congregation in the entire world. In the most important city in the entire world. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done. I thank God for my wife, Madeline, who's here. I thank God for my daughter, Joya, who took off from teaching school and is here today. And I thank God for my engineer son who just graduated with his PhD in civil and structural engineering. Amen. Just got married. Just got married and surprised us yesterday because he lives in Arkansas. We didn't know he'd be here today, but flew in last night, showed up in the living room, and is here to be a part of this thing. Today is the culmination and celebration of this phase of God's vision for our church and community. It has been a vision of holistic transformation. It started, ironically, in the year 1800, when the grandmother of Elizabeth Proctor Thomas, a free black woman who owned 11 acres of land during slavery times in this space was inspired to use her land, part of what we stand and have built on today, to provide affordable housing to runaway slaves and free blacks who did not have the power or the rights in this country to own anything, but were used to build almost everything. We are, we are here because of a vision that was cast with her some 200 plus years ago, that also at that time included worship space for four Methodist churches that still serve in the District of Columbia, each of which finds its origins on this hill, in this place where we are right now. It's a vision that appeared again when a then 34-year-old young skinny preacher named Joe Daniels was standing in the old Tony's Martinizing Cleaners across the street in 1994, waiting to get my shirts cleaned, but praying that this side of the street could one day be cleaned up from homelessness, heroin distribution, drug trafficking, drunkenness, prostitution, and the remnant of hurting broken souls. It's a vision that extended to a congregation called Emory, hungry to see hurting lives redeemed and housed affordably. So much so that from this fellowship called Emory, the likes of a man by the name of John Davis, Horace Day, Velma Falby, Bonnie Lee Nicholas, and others hit the streets of Georgia Avenue, Quackenbos, Rittenhouse, and the like to win souls for Christ. And then Hazel Broadnax and Mark and Jennifer Lau created a nonprofit entity called the Emory Beacon of Light so that amongst other things, people who were homeless could find permanent residency and that somehow, some way, 
we might find a way to create masses of affordable housing opportunities for folks in this neighborhood and this city who are being displaced because of the rising cost of living in D.C. This is a culmination and it's a celebration of a vision that was then shared and embraced and supported and lifted up by private industry leaders, political and government officials, our mayor, denominational officials, and funders. And all because we came around a vision. Uh, we're told that without a vision, the people perish. Because we came around a vision that God started some 200 plus years ago on land from which a president of the United States and the federal government would evict that same poor free black woman in 1861, put her furniture under a tree and render her homeless in order to build a federal fort. We can now rejoice in the fact that that vision was not lost, but that vision was found when a church and the private sector and the government sector had the audacity to partner together and pool its common assets together. Look what happens when the private sector and the public sector and the government sector and the church come together with common assets. Marvelous things, powerful things, profound things, outrageous things, like a 99-unit affordable housing commercial community and congregational development project called the Beacon Center that is already blessing people can come to pass. We stand in a place. We stand in a place where you will see families cry because they are not being displaced from this city but now have a safe, affordable place to live. You are in a place where you can watch young people wave to you from the windows of their living rooms with smiles, and you can see children dance up and down the hallways because they have finally a place that they can call home with so much joy. You will see a place where you can witness a congregation whose sacrifice and sharing of its land and its space, its four and a half year sojourn of worshiping in a school and learning in a deeper way what it means to be church and how to do church when you have no building has not gone in vain. You are in a place you're in a place where a city can rejoice because more affordable housing units are being offered to the very people who make up the infrastructure of this city but struggle to afford to live in the city where they work. To God be the glory for the great things that God has done. Today is a culmination and celebration of this phase of a vision. But for us, it's the commencement of a new phase. Yes, for us at Emory, through Emory and beyond, <laughs> it's the commencement of a fresh external fundraising campaign <laughs> to invite those of you who are inclined to support this legacy that we seek to expand. There are still key areas of the Beacon Center that the Emory Fellowship and the Emory Beacon of Light still need to fund so that the legacy being built here can continue in broad, life-transforming ways. 
we did not sell our property to big time developers selling away our vision. We decided that we would partner with a developer that shared in God's vision and was committed to seeing that God's vision would have the reign of the day. We invite you, if you would be so kind, to support financially key areas like the restaurant Hazel spoke of that will honor Elizabeth Proctor Thomas and will provide culinary arts training for returning citizens. We invite you to be a part of this legacy. There are some amazing opportunities to be a part of our history. There are naming opportunities for various spaces you'll see today. There's a donor wall near the entrance of the building. And there's a name inscribed, inscribed stained glass window campaign here in the sanctuary. There are information booths around the building. And led by our head fundraiser, India Martin, and our fundraising team, they can be identified with the dark pink lapel roses. Would y'all stand up, fundraising team? Please raise your hands. Amen. 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 Somebody. As I close this out, today is the culmination of this phase of the vision. But it is also a commencement for the next phase. It is a commencement of the desire to replicate this vision in other parts of the city. Where vital and vibrant communities of faith use their assets. Where vibrant and vital churches of faith use our assets to partner with the private and governmental sectors to carry out God's vision for their communities in creative and innovative and dynamic ways. Ways that house people who need affordable housing. Ways that uplift those who are struggling. Ways that help people live a whole life. Emory has a second site we're already pursuing. And we encourage other faith communities, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, and the like, to join in the efforts of using your assets to make sure that disenfranchised people all across this city have a great life to live. Finally, as I, pre as I prepare to introduce one of the great champions of this cause, this is a day of kudos at this stage of the vision. As Hazel Broadnax has thanked many, we need to publicly thank Hazel Broadnax. We would not be here today if it were not for Hazel Broadnax. I want to thank the members of the greatest church in the world, the Emory Fellowship. You've been patient, you've been persistent, and you have been prayerful. And the fruit of your labors is amongst us. Thank you to everyone on our development team who've already been listed. Thank you to all of our great government officials who have made a way for this day to be. Thank you for our synagogue partners in the house. Amen. Thank you for our ecumenical partners in the house. I see my Presbyterian brothers and sisters in the house. And thank you. Thank you to the one I introduce, the woman who has really made this possible for us. She has supported our vision from the time she ran for public office. She has supported our vision from the time she became councilwoman of this ward. She has supported our vision 
when she became the chair of the Economic Development Committee on the Council. She has supported and attended all of our community events. She has walked through these doors to worship with us when the roof was caving in. She has been our supporter. She has been a champion of affordable housing. She means what she says and indeed says what she means. I thank God to introduce to you the mayor of the District of Columbia, the Honorable Muriel Bowser. Good morning, everybody. And praise God for the Emory Fellowship. And praise God for Pastor Joe Daniels. Let's give our pastor another big round of applause. First Lady, Madam Bishop, and to all assembled, uh, I'm Muriel Bowser. I get to be mayor of my hometown, and I'm really proud of that as well. And I speak now for uh, my predecessors who have been mentioned, uh, starting with Mayor Williams and Mayor Fenty and Mayor Gray. And I'm the fourth mayor, and God has allowed me to be the last mayor to work on the Emory Beacon of Lights project on Georgia Avenue. I want to acknowledge my, my housing team who have already spoken, uh, who have been just dynamic leaders in helping implement my vision and yours for more safe, affordable housing for Washingtonians, which is so critical to how our city moves forward. I just remember, as we go back these 10 years, uh, that one man decided that he was going to take back a corner. That's what I heard. One man decided that he was going to take back a corner. And he had an incredible church to get behind all his wild and crazy ideas. <laughs> Just imagine if more men and women decide that they're going to take back a corner. Just imagine if one more church decides that it's going to take back a corner. Just imagine if we have another project for the Methodist Fund to get behind how many more corners we can take back. Because today is indeed a day of kudos, and we have to celebrate how not everybody is blessed with vision. That's number one. And when we encounter people who are blessed with vision, we have to do everything humanly and godly possible to get behind that vision. And to me, that's what the Emory Beacon of Light represents. It represents an idea whose time was past due and everybody getting together to get behind that idea. I have had the privilege of getting to know Pastor Daniels in this church. I have had the privilege of being mentored by a great woman of this church. Uh, and Hazel, I'm talking about you. Uh, because she is just a wonderful leader, um, but she knows how to get things done in her way. Uh, is one of the toughest people that I know. And she never let anybody or anything cross the Emory Fellowship or Pastor Joe Daniels. I want to acknowledge um, your vision in, in hiring a, a woman to help you lead this project. There's not many women in the development business, but Gina Merritt has been loyal to you in this project. I want to acknowledge her for her vision as well. Then I just want to say a, a little thing that the, the bishop just said so well. Um, that projects like this are very difficult for a lot of reasons. The financing is complicated. You heard this is a historic site. You heard that too. Uh, sitting in the middle of Georgia Avenue, you heard that uh, too. And building on the top of this hill uh, was, was not easy. But what we knew is if we had a community like here in Brightwood and the Ward 4 Community Council member that said yes in my backyard, 
We have to invest in that. The truth is, before Emory even had the appropriate space, it was helping people get back on their feet. The truth is, we didn't even know. I said, Pastor, you, you're serving that many homeless at Emory? And he said, yes. And I said, well, where? Because he made a way. He decided that the church was bigger than its four walls and that it had to go out into the community to spread the good word. I'll just, I'm just honored to be a part of this process, um, and I'm also honored to be able to cite the Emory Beacon of Light and Emory Fellowship uh, as an example for the entire city. You'll, you'll like this, Pastor. I was meeting with a congregation, uh, several uh, church leaders in Southwest, Southwest who has so many development pressures, and I said to them, you need to go and visit the Emory Beacon of Light and see what they've done. Uh, now that I'm in the sanctuary, we're just going to invite everybody, Pastor, and you all going to give a class, uh, and we are going to get uh, more housing. Uh, just keep in mind, when you can in put up 99 units uh, of housing on Georgia Avenue, uh, and just think if we can do that all up uh, the avenue and all corridors across our city, we can house more people. I established a goal. Uh, for 36,000 new units by 2025. And I am also going to establish goals for every neighborhood. I learned a lesson when we were closing D.C. General, and I made an audash, audacious statement that every ward was going to be a part of the solution. War 3, War 8, War 4, War 5, War 6. Every ward was going to be a part of the solution. And everybody wants to end homelessness, and everybody wants to close D.C. General, right? So that means everybody has to be a part of the solution. Uh, and this is just a wonderful example of rebuilding your sanctuary, reimagining it, because really it looks nothing like it did. <laughs> nothing like it did. You gotta reimagine it. I mean, the church is here, right? The pastor's here, the people here. So that's the church. And it looks so different. But then you have. Housing? Did you get the basketball court in here, Pastor? Yes, got a basketball court and community center right in here. You got a place where MPD could come over and visit. People walking down the street can visit. Could go over to the Walmart. We had to fight for that one too, but we got that one too. Uh, and that has trans really transformed um, this part of the avenue. So to all of uh, the Emory Beacons Fellowship, because this, uh, this is my last point. I was driving down here, uh, probably was last fall. And I think I was expecting it to be open by then. And uh, I said to my team, are they still going to church in that school? And I, my heart just felt heavy because I knew it had been a long time. And just because of just our human nature, it's hard to stick with something for a long time when you're not in your regular space. And I said, we've got to get them back. I wasn't thinking about the housing then. I was thinking, oh, we've got to get them back in their church. They've got to get back home. And um, now I get to stand here with all of you back home. Congratulations in my fellowship. Pull this down just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I, my name is Crystal McDonald, and I am the chair of the church council here at Emory United Methodist Church. And I'm just going to ask that all of God's children pray with me. Yes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our creator, we come, O oh God, and we thank you and we bless you for this day, O oh God. We come as witnesses to a miracle, O oh Lord. We come in joyful celebration, but most of all, God, we come with a heart of thanksgiving. We thank you for the vision that we now know as the Beacon Center. 
we thank you for the visionary, O oh God, in the form of our pastor, Daniels. Lord, we thank you for all that you have blessed with their time, their talent, their treasures, their prayers, their sacrifice, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the Emory congregation. We thank you for the developers, the design team, the, the design and construction teams, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for our interfaith brothers and sisters. We thank you, O oh God, for those who house us, Brightwood School, Bridges Academy, we thank you, O oh God, for everyone who prayed, O oh God, and who blessed us along the way. We thank you, O oh God, for our city government. We thank you for our mayor, our city council member, and the entire D.C. government, all of the agencies that had a hand in this project. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for our supporters not just in the United Methodist Church, O oh God, but all other pro public and private sector partners, O oh God, who helped to make this project possible. And most of all, God, we thank you for the Emory Congregation. And we just ask that you bless the circle that surrounds the Beacon Center, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for the Jesus who is the center of our joy. The Jesus who taught us how to love. The Jesus who taught us about compassion. The Jesus who taught us about long-suffering. The Jesus who taught us how to be kind to one another. The Jesus who taught us how to forgive one another, oh God. We thank you for that Jesus. We thank you for that Jesus who gave us the light to shine from this beacon center, oh God. And when others see the pathway to the beacon center, oh Lord, may they find hope here. May they find wholeness here. Rest, restoration, reinvigoration, oh God. Revival, renewal. And for those that reside with us, oh God, when they come home, may they find peace and tranquility, O oh God. We want to bear witness to God's love, and we want others to see us in action, O oh Lord. See our faith in action daily. We just thank you, O oh God. We bless you. We thank you, and we ask that you bless all that we've done so far. The journey has not been easy, but it has been so worth it, and we thank you for it, O oh God. And as we move forward, and others ask us about this Lord we serve, and what does he require of us? He wants us to act justly. He wants us to love mercy and to walk humbly with him. So bless us in our coming and our going, oh God. We ask that everything that happens on this day, that you anoint it, consecrate it, and be with us henceforth, and forevermore. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. It's time to cut the ribbon. Uh, I need everybody just to uh, follow these instructions very carefully. I give God thanks for uh, our coordinator, Tiffany Rose, today, uh, LaShonda Stewart from our congregation, from the mayor's office, so many who have helped us. I'm going to ask everyone uh, from the stage uh, that you allow everyone from the stage to process outside. We're going to be cutting the ribbon right out here in the courtyard. And so I'm going to ask if all of our uh, stage guests would first proceed. And as they come, uh, after they come, Amen. Somebody say after. After they uh, get outside, if uh, all board members of the Emory Beacon of Light would then proceed, uh, all staff members of the Emory Fellowship, if you would come, uh, uh, all persons who are part of the mayor's office and, and the D.C. government, uh, and then we'll all process outside um, following them. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. Uh, thank God for clear windows. If you want to look out the window and see, you can. But we hope and pray that you will join us outside as we cut the ribbon. Amen.
Yes, ma'am. On the count of three. One, two, three. Yeah!